Everyone will remember that Alexander Usyk is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. So you don't think people will remember that Tyson Fury had to go through the drugs, the alcohol, the trials and tribulations. I also really like Usyk as well. I love his energy I, again. I very I, feel. I very feel. I feel. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see Tyson come back hard mm. because Pause. he's done it before. Yeah, we'll pause on that. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Paul and Mike Tyson's fight coming up. A Jake Paul, rightly or wrongly, fighting one of the greatest boxers of all time in his 50s. Do you think Jake Paul is only picking fight against guys who are past it? Wins and losses, I feel like this month this year has been a lot of trials and tribulations for a lot of people we're talking the boxing industry we're talking football arsenal oh god oh arsenal my heart is broken but we're proud we're proud we're proud we're proud because welcome back to teddy talks <laughs> teddy suarez here I'm joined by my brother, Sydney Suarez. Hello, people. Hello, hello. Uh, we are proud because as much as we are Arsenal fans and we didn't win the league, um, I really thought we were going to win the league. I really thought. I really thought it was going to happen, but... There's a lot of wins happening. We're the third youngest team in the Premier League. We can, we can hold our chests high and know that there's a bright future ahead of us. Yeah. We didn't win it now, but we competed with the best, mm. the best of the best that we've ever seen. You know, this Man City team might be the greatest team who's won the Premier League. You know, to win it four times in a row, we've never seen that before. Arguably Europe. Arguably Europe. Arguably Europe, because what they're doing right now is... It's insane. It's insane. Within our lifetime, within our life period. You're probably all wondering at home, how does this all tie into today's episode? Today's episode, we are talking about the wins, the losses, the resilience, the mental fortitude that uh, everybody has had to go through. Not just the winners, not just the losers throughout some of our favorite moments that have happened so far this year in boxing, in football, in a lot of sports, um, even history. But... It's really, really prevalent because um, one of the losses I've mentioned boxing a few times now. A few times now um, is the recent Tyson Fury against Usyk. Ooh. What a fight! What a fight! What a fight! I'll be honest, I didn't actually watch it initially. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fraud! I, I, I had to watch the highlights. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What was I doing? What at were the you time? doing? Teddy, um, what was I why were you not watching the fight? the fight? In mm -hmm. fact, no, I can't say. No, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a date. You was on, I was a, on date. a date, so there's very valid reason why I didn't watch the fight. Was it a good date? Um, let's not talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the the reality of it is that. I mean, yeah, it was good, but yeah, um, we won't talk about it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll revisit that one. We'll come back to it. Yeah, we'll come back to it. But um, have you got yeah. a quote to, to kick us off for today's? Yes, yes, and 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 actually, the tw the quote does tie in quite nicely with, um, I'd say specifically the Tyson Fury um, loss. So winning is not everything, but the effort to win is. Uh, and I think that's quite powerful in relation to Tyson Fury's loss because it was a really, really good fight. Mm. Like it was a fight of the ages. When I was watching the highlight, I was actually pissed, which says a lot about my date, but I was pissed that I missed it mm. because there was so much going on round one all the way through to I think round nine. Um, I was like, damn, I really missed the fight of the year. It was it was it was intense. I mean, I was at, on the edge of my seat when I was watching it. Mm. Some people would say Tyson had the early rounds, uh, and and then you know Usic then took the the mid rounds and then dominated the latter half of the match. But it was pretty close. Yeah, it was pretty close. From from where I'm standing, I think Usic was the was the clear winner. Well, let, let's get straight into it. What 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 does that mean for boxing? Because Usyk won. Mm -hmm. Usyk is not a heavyweight. Um, 
I mean, arguably, he now is a heavyweight, having got unified all the titles. Um, so just to catch everyone up, just in case you're you're not aware of what was happening in, in the world of boxing, Tyson Fury, the, the gypsy king, the guy that's larger than life, was fighting against Alexander Usyk. Oh, pitted also to be one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. That's right, that's right. Let me not give him... I know not, you don't no, want to say it don't because wanna... you don't, you don't, you, you know, we, we saw Mike Tyson, we saw, you know, we saw clips of Muhammad Ali yeah. and, you know, so it's, it's hard to say, yeah. but uh, that's yeah. what the critics are saying. They, that's, that's what they say. That's what they say. That's not what I say, but that's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> he was fighting against Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight title. So this, this means whoever wins will be number one, undisputedly. Nobody can question this man's skill. No one can question his ability. No one can question his effort. Did you think he was going to lose? No. Mm. And who I'll is be he? honest, who, I did who, Who's he? Uh, Tyson Fury. Did Tyson. you think Tyson Fury would, there would be a world in which he, as the heavyweight king, will lose? What was so beautiful about this fight, right? In the same way I was in awe when I was watching Kendrick Lamar and Drake go at it, was the fact that you could see two titans winning. Mm. Ultimate professionals, train hard. You know, they've been through their battles. And actually, just to dive deeper into Tyson Fury, I, I, I really respect his resilience mm. um, a man who is very honest with himself very honest with people around him um, someone who's gone through his trials and tribulations in terms of uh, alcohol drugs you know when he was down before he fought Deontay Wilder um, before he came back to boxing to really own who he was the battles that he fought, you know, I also love the fact that he's a godly individual. Mm. Um, but for me as an individual, watching him come back through all the dark demons that he was fighting to then come and represent the UK, come and represent his people, come and represent his tribe and where he comes from and who he is as an individual, no matter what he's been through, Beat Deontay Wilder. Beat uh, Klitschko. Klitschko. Beat um, Ingarnu, mm. which everybody thought would, be, you know, was going to be a, a, a difficult task. Um, which actually it was. It did look quite difficult. I'll be honest. I, I thought Ingarnu won that bout, mm. um, but ultimately he got the W. Mm. Comes back, fights Usyk, and loses. And for the life of me, when he lost, and I saw him talking in his interview, it kind of felt as though he might he might be on the road to retirement. Mm. But there's a huge part of me that's like, I want to see Tyson come back. Mm. And I want to see Tyson come back hard. Mm. Because he's done it before. Yeah, we'll pause on that. <laughs> <laughs> he's done it before. Mm. He's done it before and he's shown his character. And let's be honest, there's so many people, there's so many critics that have always said, ah, yeah, but Tyson, you know, huge stature. Is it your typical heavyweight with the abs that looks like Anthony Joshua or Tyson, uh, Tyson Fury? Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. those heavyweights that kind of still look relatively trim, as as um, <laughs> Tyson said in a, a clip before that he was, um, what did he say? He's, he's he's a fat, bold. He's made fat and bold handsome now. He's made that a good look. It's in trend. It's in trend. Like when you look at him as an individual, I don't know why I'm calling you in the middle of this show. 
<laughs> yeah, look like, at that. I, I don't even know why I'm doing that. <laughs> He's telling me to stop talking. Yeah. Give it a break. It's my turn. <laughs> um, but yeah, when you when you look at when you look at him as an individual and what he represents to the male figures of today, um, beyond the glory, beyond the wins, when you look at his trials and tribulations, um, there's 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 a huge part that you can really respect. Um, yeah, I fully, fully resonate with what you've just said. It just got me thinking about the time when he rose from the dead, like The Undertaker, when Deontay Wilder it was almost looked impossible. Took the lights he was out, out of his eyes. No, the lights were gone. They were gone. Like they were, f- yeah. You know, it's almost like God whispered in his ear, like, "Let there be light." Yeah, yeah you're you know, still on a mission. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're not finished. One of the most inspiring moments for me watching that fight is when he comes back from that and knowing all of the things that he'd been through, like you mentioned, battling, you know, alcohol and drugs and having the mental toughness of, you know, I've been knocked down and I'm, I'm choosing to get up. You know, thinking about the quote that you just said, it's not about winning. It's about the effort that you've put into win. And, that, and, and we learn more from the process than we do from the outcome. Incredibly powerful. We do learn so much more from the process than, than the outcome. And, 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 and for the most part, sometimes not, not, not everybody gets the outcome that they're looking for. But when they come to the end of that tunnel, they really feel like they're a completely different person. You know, you might get to, in the context of gymming, I I might get to losing tons of weight. And I had this vision in my mind of how my chest will look and how my abs might look and how my waist might look, but actually it looks slightly different to what my vision looks like. However, I still feel great. I still feel like I can, I know I can run five to 10K mm. because I've done it now. I've gone through a process and that means more to me. I know I can walk up the stairs now and not have to be panting like an animal. Mm. I know that I can walk to the office or walk to the station and feel good. Mm. So there's so many more benefits that you get out of the process of putting yourself through your idea of health your idea of, oh, this feels really, really uncomfortable. Oh my God, this is a really scary bout that I'm about to experience, which, uh, you know, let's get on to Arsenal. Um, guys, you did well. You did very well. You did well. I know that the, the trophy cabinet is still a little bit dusty at the end of this season. However, what I will say, what I will say proud and clear is that we did definitely do better than last season. We did. <laughs> do you know how many times I've said that in my lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. But it is actually it is the, the truth. truth. I, I still feel as though, regardless of whether or not City have actually got the trophy, in some way, shape or form, I still feel like we have had some sort of win this season. Because... We lost some, some. <laughs> there's a reason why we are here today, guys. But we lost some games mm. that we needed to bounce, bounce back from. And actually, I do remember way back when, you know, the lights of Neville, the lights of Carragher, the lights of all these pundits. I don't, I don't know you guys don't talk about this, but the lights of these guys said it would just literally be City and Liverpool fighting till the end of the season. Like, come on, guys. They were sleeping on us. They were sleeping on us. Mm. And I love the attitude that, as you said earlier on, the team is incredibly young. I think the oldest person is maybe 30 or 32 within the team, right? But the generation that they are have proven that even though we might be slightly inexperienced, you've got someone like Odegaard. Yes, he played for Real Madrid. But ultimately, he's in a team filled with people that 
aren't necessarily winners. Outside of Gabriel, outside of Zinchenko, these are these are guys that are actually coming together as players and owning the position, owning their talent, owning the fact that actually we're, we're, we're good here. Mm. Like Okay, so what really matters? Is it the win or is it the effort? Because everyone will remember... Man City for winning the Premier League four times. No one will remember who comes second place. Everyone will remember that Alexander Usyk is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Well, you so you don't think people will remember that Tyson Fury had to go through the drugs, the alcohol, the trials and tribulations, you know? Because I I, I feel like the Netflix executives that Netflix or Prime, whoever did their documentary. Mm appreciated that mm. it was a story and yes you could argue that obviously Usyk has won now so maybe the the Fury era is 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 going down the drain but I, I don't know I would argue against that with with Arsenal the only reason why I as a genuine fan of the team feel as bright as I do despite the fact that we lost the season mm -hmm. Every single time I'm like, oh, yeah, but we didn't win the trophy. I think about the moments that we've created. I think about the fact that we made fans go and walk home before the games even ended and there's now a corridor of fans mm. whilst we're still playing with 30, 30, 40, 45 minutes of the game left to play. Mm. Like those moments of, oh, my goodness, like we, we haven't had the feeling as fans that we've had and that's despite the fact that we've we haven't won anything mm. what about people outside looking in us as fans we can connect we can understand we we can be proud of our teams but you know thinking broadly outside of football maybe again that, jumping back into boxing with Ryan Garcia and David Haney fighting each other Ryan Garcia coming on top and now everyone's trying to take the W away from him because he drug tested positive for taking steroids. So it's like, okay, what, what, what matters here more? Is it the win or is it the effort? Because well, But that answers your question. Mm. The fact that people have zoomed into the fact that actually he has gone through a drug test that's failed, people do care about the effort. Because you wouldn't really care about how we how how he's won if yes, you know, you've got the rules, but you'd be like, ah oh, yeah, but still, mm. you know. Okay. Ju you just bat an island. Mm. He's won now. Mm. He's the winner. Mm -hmm. So if it was to come to light that Man City do in fact get charged for cheating the system with financial fair play rules just like Everton did and they would have had to have points deducted from them in this season but it becomes after the fact you know maybe next season or the season after will people do you think people look back at this time as this was one of the greatest teams ever that won treble won the Champions League won the FA Cup won the Premier League and then after that they went on to win another Premier League for the fourth season in a row do you think people will look back at this and be thinking, yeah, but they, they cheated? 100%. Mm. And it goes back to what you're asking me. Is it the win or is it the effort? Everybody's going to feel cheated. It's the same thing with Ryan Garcia. Everyone feels as though, actually, we thought you pulled off a really, really good feat and you pulled off something completely incredible and amazing. But you've actually pulled our eyes... You've actually, mm. you know, you've actually done us over here. Mm. There's a conspiracy about the whole Ryan Garcia thing. Is that the 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 Illuminati or the the Matrix, whoever you want to call it, whatever you want to label the, the 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 outside external forces that are acting on him? People are saying that the reason why this is all coming out now is because he's been so outspoken about some of the things powerful people are doing. In the industry, you know, so for some of you who are just catching up on this, Ryan Garcia had episodes 
I don't want to frame it that way because I don't want to say that he's 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 got a screw loose, but he's had moments where he was ex- exposing the industry, mm. which made him look like he was acting out of character. And some of the things that you were saying, he was shining a light on the Bohemian Club in in, in America, where it's essentially it's a, a weird a gen- club, a weird gentleman's club, yeah. where they would have some demonic rituals and sacrifice people. And apparently when Ryan was there, they t- tied him up to watch young children be abused. Uh, again, your question, why was he even there? But that's, there's so many questions about the There's so, so many, many questions. questions. I, I'm, I'm like, whoa. But I, I yeah, I, I kind of feel like that that happens more often than not within society that we've talked about it so many times. People will see something, report it, and actually nobody cares. Nobody's listening. Nobody believes. People think the truth is so far-fetched. If it is the truth, again, yes, until proven guilty, until we actually see some hard evidence and facts. But someone has pointed something out. Um, as you said earlier on, you know, you, you, you did say that you shouldn't be looked at as crazy. And it's true. Why would you call someone crazy when you neither nor, you, you don't know whether or not it's either fact or false? Until that's been made prevalent, then yes, you can come out and say, okay, we need to actually deal with this or we need to help this person. I do I do think that the whole boxing world and where it's at and where it's going to go is is going to be an interesting one because I I really like the fact that sports I love the fact that football racing boxing and all these things that we've been we've been experiencing over a long period of time decades years of going through people going through hardships and actually seeing themselves through the other side and lifting a trophy, that that feeling does tend to drive society in a weird way, you know? If we see if we see the young Saka miss the penalty for England, everyone's in uproar. It's, you know, we we feel devastated for him. We feel like actually we want to see how he's going to develop into the next person that is not actually feeling like, oh, the world is ending. Mm. We want to see him come back. We want to see him have a good season next season. We want to see what that looks like. And we want to try and emulate that ourselves. We want to see Tyson Fury come back. We want to see Tyson Fury mm. come back and we want to see the process of what that looks like. Mm. Because actually, we know self self subconsciously we actually understand in our day-to-day lives we also go through ups and downs mm-hmm. sometimes we may not look at look at it that way but i feel as though somehow psychologically that is really why we are so into the entertainment sports of the athlete world and seeing everyone kind of go at it mm-hmm. because actually it reminds us of something because it definitely reminds me of something. Mm-hmm. When I think, oh my goodness, like my my back was against the wall, not as extreme as getting knocked to the ground like Tyson Fury or getting knocked to the ropes like Tyson Fury or losing uh, a, 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 an FA Cup or losing the league over a, a long period of time. But we go through wins and losses. You know, relationships, sometimes we go through wins and losses until we find the one. Jobs, sometimes, I know certainly when I was in sales, I was going through deals that may go sour when I thought actually it was going to go, and I'm going to get this amazing commission, and I'm going to have this amazing client. Somehow, some something goes wrong. And it's how I deal with that. It's how I process that. It's how I learn. Um... And I think I think we 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 have a 
a huge part to play in 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 in, in feeling those feelings and actually um, appreciating that and yeah, respecting it as well and respecting it too. You know, I think there's there's a lot there's a lot that you just said there, which which I want to get into the, the part where you don't believe in yourself. You've been knocked down, and you think that I can't get up. What is it that someone like Tyson will be saying to themselves when they're on the floor and the lights are out? It's you against you. That inner voice in your mind, and there's 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 two inner voices. One saying, "Just stay there. It's long. Mm. I'm not getting up." This is my last fight anyway. This is my last fight anyway. <laughs> and then there's another one which is saying something and you have to decide whether you turn the volume up or you turn it down. And that is the choice, isn't it? Mm. It's whether you decide which voice you're going to focus on. What do you think it is that you're saying to yourself? Those times where you lost that deal, and you're like, I'm ready to go again. What, was, what were the sort of things that you were saying to yourself that you think people should be saying to themselves when they've been knocked back? And this is not about the win. Do you know what, this is about do you, the fight. Do you know, as you were asking me that question, hmm. the first thing that popped to mind was, it's not that bad. That was the first thing that popped to mind. Because initially when I step into the mode of, oh, I'm going to pick the phone up and I'm going to call this client who I've never spoken to before in my life. This client might not know who I am. And I'm going to do this thing that's making me feel uncomfortable. In the context of boxing, I'm about to get into the ring and I'm about to fight someone that looks like a menace who's been training to take my head off and who's been training to win this title, who's been trained to take me down, is fear. Same thing with Arsenal. Same thing with everything that happens in our day-to-day -day life. There's things that we experience that may seem like it's the first time and it's the first step, so it's daunting. When I get to that moment and I've done it, and whatever the outcome might be, isn't that bad? Or I've been here before. Mm. Those are typically the two things that is going through my mind. It's either it's not that bad, let's go again. Oh, now I understand it. Now. This is what I'm gleaming from this situation. This is what I'm understanding. Okay, maybe I can do this differently. Maybe I can, well, maybe this isn't for me. Mm. But there has to be a genuine reason as to why it wasn't for me. Is it because I, you know, I didn't like it? If, is it because it didn't resonate with me? Is it because I approached it with the wrong reasons? It's about your why. Mm. And then the latter, like I was saying, it's I've been here before. I love that. Why am I here? Have I been here before? Is it that bad? Exactly. Because for the most part, you look at when AJ lost for his, in, was it before his Nganu fight? No. In, before his Nganu fight, fight, it was incredible. He did another good, great win. Mm -hmm. It was before that. AJ had a loss. Against you sick. Against Usyk, that was it, against Usyk. And he had that outbreak on the microphone. Him losing really hurt. Yeah, it was really, really painful. Really I'm, a, I'm painful. an AJ fan. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge AJ really fan. Hurt. I love AJ. And I also um, want to see him rise all the way to the top. All the way. All the way. And I, I want him to win and win and win. win because yeah. he's just, yeah, he's that guy. I love AJ. Shout out to AJ. But when he lost... You notice he hadn't been there before. Mm. And if you noticed in that period, I wouldn't want to say it's his why, but I, I, I would kind of, it was a shock element of it. 
He hasn't processed exactly what we're talking about. New feeling. When you when you say he hadn't been there before, you mean he hadn't been there before where he lost his belts and there's no sort of rematch available after that. It's like now it's done. Now it's done. Now it's done. It's almost like, you know, the unconscious was that I'm going to win this. You know, there is that as well. I'm I'm, I'm going to because when he this. fought Ruiz, he had he'd lost. But he knew there was still a chance that I'm going I'm to get going my belt. to get back. I'm, 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 I have the opportunity right now, mm -hmm. even though I haven't been here before, I haven't fought this kind of opponent, but I do get the opportunity to come back, learn from this situation, and finish this person mm -hmm. in the nicest possible way. Mm -hmm. But with the Usyk situation, it's interesting because... As much as he hadn't been there before with Usyk and he'd fought that kind of person and what have you, and yes, Usyk is 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 a good fighter. I also really like Usyk as well. I love his energy. I again, very I feel. I very feel. I feel. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's a fantastic. And again, I, I love the fact that he's a godly person. I, I really respect that. And the, um, and the heartwarming words he. He had about his dad. Exactly. And the emotion that broke out when he was speaking about his dad, the genuineness, the, the authenticity of, 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 of his why and what he's doing it for. And that's the one thing that I respect about boxing. As much as you have your ambition, the other person have their own ambitions as well. And when two people that are doing this with the utmost best intention, with the utmost professionalism, with the utmost everything, that's what makes boxing so much more exciting. And that's what, in terms of where boxing needs to go from here, that's what I'm hoping for moving forward. It's these great characters that are fighting together, that aren't afraid to come together. Because I know there's a lot of money involved and there's a lot of risk when you lose in boxing. Not like the Premier League where you have 11 players Next season, you go again, you get a top off of maybe four or five great, amazing players within that team, and you go again. Boxing, there's a bit of a shelf life. You are your own person. And the other side to it is that unlike football, where you have very clear outcomes, win, draw, or lose, sometimes it can be subjective. Oh, this good, these judges didn't score it right. Oh, if that's there's not the a most clear knockout. Thing. Like the referee stopping Usyk <laughs> from... I mean, I, I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to see Tyson get knocked out, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But the referee stopping Usyk from delivering the final blow, mm -hmm. you know, not... There's variables that, yes, don't get me wrong, other sports have variables where they've got referees that can get things wrong and X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But within boxing, it's kind of very different in the sense that there's variables that if you don't get knocked out it's really out of your control, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I, I, I really lost this and it's because these four or five judges have decided that I've lost it. Mm. Yeah. Right? And like, it's not fair. It's I've, not... I've worked nine months, I've been training hard, blood, sweat and tears. The effort has definitely been there and now someone is not recognising that effort. Exactly. Whilst we're on this topic of, of boxing, we can't talk boxing without talking about Jake Paul and Mike Tyson's fight coming up you know this young man who's probably our, our our age right i think he's he's in his late late 20s who are we talking about jake paul? jake paul um rightly or wrongly fighting one of the greatest boxers of all time in his 50s now do uh, you know what? With Mike Tyson, I would personally still be scared. Like I, 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 I would never want to get. <laughs> way Even still if Mike moving, Tyson right? had a cane <laughs> and he was walking with a walking stick, I still wouldn't want to get in a ring with him because of his glare, or his just glare, glare his... his mental attitude towards war. And actually going up against another individual, like he's, he's, he's a terrifying human being. Um, Do you think Jake Paul is only picking fight against guys who are past it? It's an interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could easily, you would like to think that 
someone of his stature. I mean, it works two ways. If Jake Paul came out and said, Floyd Mayweather was ducking me, for example's sake, mm. and, you know, there is the actual fact that that's happening, then yes, I'd be like, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, given the fact that he's actually, he hasn't actually goaded a, a, a professional that will actually teach him a lesson in the school of boxing. Like, uh. But when you see what happened with Ryan Garcia and Haney, obviously that needs to be ironed out. Mm. But when you look at that situation, you kind of are like, uh, well, maybe, you know, could it be that the boxers are ducking the YouTubers because of the fear of losing? Mm. You know, yeah. or it could be ego. Mm -hmm. As a boxer, I'd be like, I, I, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Mm. Why, why am I going to fight a YouTuber? You don't know what it's like to be putting in the blood, sweat and tears like I've been putting in that work. But I'm not, I, if I was, personally, mm. if I was in the boxing industry and, and I saw Jake Paul and his brother knocking people out left, right, and center and showing that boxing is just come into the ring, make a quick payday, I would be calling them out. Mm. I'd be like, look, come and fight me. I'm the professional. I'm that guy. Let me show you what boxing's about. Mm. They're scared. It, so it could be that. Mm -hmm. I don't like it... <laughs> It's very easy to say that Jake mm. Paul's the one that's not fighting all these other people, but who knows? He could have actually said, look, I want you to go and ask, I don't know, Canelo. I want you to go and ask, I think I, I saw an interview, to be fair, where Canelo was like, come on, I'm not going to fight this YouTuber. And maybe I'm that's also where the, the, the politics within boxing is that it's like a social class sort of thing. It's like, why are you giving those guys, the energy, where they're not on our level, you shouldn't even be looking at that as a fight, regardless of the payday. We're in a different league. Mm. So stop even entertaining that. When they get their boxing license and they, they want to step on our stage, then we'll fight you. I think it could be a pride thing. And mm. ultimately, when, you, when, you, when you're delving into the psyche of the male ego, I, I don't I don't need to prove myself to this person. That's why I like what May Mayweather did with Conor McGregor. Mm. You genuinely think you can come from UFC and come and fight me in boxing and you will knock me out because you think you're the best fighter in UFC. Come then. Like, you know, mm. let's let's do this. Mm. Right? And mm. that's exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because Mayweather, yes, he got a good payday. Conor got a good payday, but you know, ultimately, it's a pride thing. It's like, I, I am that guy. It doesn't matter about whether or not I'm 40 years of age fighting this guy. I'm I'm the heavyweight, heavyweight. I'm the person. I want to, people to think I'm misconstruing context. I know he's a, he's lighter than that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, psychologically, he's like, I'm the bigger man. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, the I'm that guy yeah, within I'm, this industry, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. So if Mike Tyson loses... How do you feel about that result? I'll blame it on age. I'll give. I'll be the one to say, look, he's an old man now. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, we know Mike Tyson was just. Have you seen some of the videos of Mike Tyson? He looks like an. He look, <laughs> I don't want to step in the ring with a fifty-something-year-old that's moving like that. Some of so, honestly, some of his videos. All I'm hearing is. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> 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 And he's 50? Did mm. you say he's 50? Maybe 57. So like mm. when you when you when you look at that, it makes you almost ignore the age. It's like age is nothing but a number when you look at Mike Tyson. But even from Jake Paul's perspective, do you want your legacy to be of someone who is knocking out a 57-year-old? Because he'll celebrate that. He'll, he'll celebrate, he'll celebrate that. that. Yeah. He'll, he'll celebrate that. 
<laughs> I've knocked out Mike, the Mike Tyson, not bro. You've knocked out a fifty-seven-year-old. You've you, you, you've gone. You're fighting an old man, and 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 you know what? If it, if if he wasn't a boxer, people will be frowning upon your behaviors, and like you don't you don't fight. Okay, old, so how, old should, should this be allowed? Then would you? Should this should the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight be going ahead? I Given think, the fact that we've got concussions, mm-hmm. we've got serious like things that could go wrong here. Mm-hmm. Should this be happening? I'm putting myself in Mike Tyson's shoes, and if I was as great as he was and had knocked out many of a man and was also considered one of the greatest boxers of all time, there's no way my ego will watch a YouTuber and believe that this man's capable of knocking me out when I'm still moving the way I'm moving. So I, I wouldn't want to be... I'm trying to think, if I was in Mike Tyson's shoes, would I want someone else to to come into this situation and say, you're not allowed to fight this guy because you're too old when I feel like I can put him to sleep? No. Mm. But the world watching, I, 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 not only do I feel this way, I've picked up that a lot of people are feeling this way, that he should not be fighting Jake Paul. Mm. You know, you're... It's not that you're past it. It's that you have a beautiful legacy. Why do you need this payday? You don't need this boost to your ego because we're still watching those old clips. What about the extreme then? I don't don't like to Hmm. think negative and touch wood. But what happens Hmm. if... Mike Tyson is seriously hurt. Like I'm talking critically hurt. What happens at that point? When's this fight? July? I think the 20th of July. 20th of July. Yes. So 20th of July. Mm. What happens if Mike Tyson is seriously hurt? Because as I was saying earlier on, there are a lot of clips out there where Mike Tyson has talked about his urge for wanting to be back in the ring, Mm -hmm. his almost depressive feeling of not feeling himself when he's not fighting. And it's, I think he spoke quite touching. It was quite touching the way he spoke about his departure from boxing and the way in which, the way in which he has let go of something that was part of his DNA. He studied it to the hilt. He knows boxing. He knows the art of war. He knows the art of fighting with the back of his hand. And it was quite a, 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 an effect that it had on him. So what would happen if something bad was to happen to him? I think he's prepared for that outcome. As a fighter, he's been prepared for that outcome his entire life. He's been putting his life on the line for a very long time. And I think there's there's that there's something in these warriors that we will never be able to understand. They can look at death straight in the eyes and still be excited. Still want to go in and still want to dance with the fire that's in front of them and I think that that yearn for that adrenaline rush that excitement it's hard to understand unless you've actually been in the arena Mm. you know those footballers who become very depressed after they stop playing football because football is all they know and the excitement that they got from football and the passion that they were feeling every time they were playing the game, they were training, the camaraderie with their friends, the the taunt, everything, that connection with fans, everything that's associated with football. The fact that they lose that and they become disconnected, they become withdrawn, they start indulging in the right or wrong things... We see it happening again and again. And, 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 and those who try and channel it in the right way, they find other roles within the sport. 
like being pundits, like being managers, like being coaches, like, and I'm sure maybe Mike Tyson has tried all of these things. We've seen him coach Nganu. We've seen him from a pundit, from a pundit's perspective. We've seen him talk about boxing, you know, uh, on podcasts. And we've seen him do things even beyond boxing. And I think because his life was centered around that, I can, I can appreciate what you're saying. He's getting back into the ring because this is his passion. This is the one thing that he wants to do. But if he was to die, it would be a huge loss. Or if he was to be hospitalized in a way that is hard to come back from, of course, that would be a huge loss. So would but that I, make him a? Would that make him? I know we've talked about in some some episodes previously about icons and role models. If is Mike Tyson a role model, an icon? You say yes. Yeah, because hmm. he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot. And he's done <sighs> some wild stuff. He's done some very wild stuff. <laughs> he's he's done some crazy things. But as human beings, we evolve. Mm. And he's clearly gone through the process of growth. And it goes back to what we were talking about, about the other Tyson, Tyson Fury. And that's one thing I do respect about Mike Tyson. What you're saying is he goes through growth. We own the things that we are going through in order to grow. That's negative or positive. We're able to look ourselves in the mirror and say, ah, oh, I did the wrong thing here. I should have done this. I could have done this better. And from the period of the Mike Tyson era, the period of Tyson Fury, nobody, I would like to think nobody would have even known that Tyson Fury had a drug problem or an alcohol problem. Unless I'm reading the whole situation wrong and someone can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but unless he hadn't come out and said, this is what I was going through. Yes, Deontay Wilder was on the interview stage saying, oh, if it wasn't for me getting you out of the coke and the alcohol and giving you a reason to come back, you wouldn't be here. But I, I would like to think before that comment was made, I don't really know the history of the situation that well, but I do distinctly remember Tyson owning up to these things, regardless of Deontay Wilder coming out and saying that. So I feel like these people, in answer to my own question to you, for that reason, yes, I, you know, I, I, would, I would definitely err on the side of Mike Tyson being a great for that reason. He also owns who he is. Mm. He doesn't pretend to be, you know, someone he's not. He doesn't pretend to be a godly person, but yet he's dismissing all of his issues that he's had in the past, you know? So I, I, um, I think all the topics that we spoke about today in terms of football involves a lot of icons, involves a lot of role models, involves a lot of people looking into these situations and taking something away from it. Um, like the resilience, like ah, the wins, the losses, the feeling of the feeling of, you know, where where do I go from here? The feeling of I can't come out of this situation. All those all those feelings that resonate with life today, life tomorrow. You know, it, it, I, I, I've, I've always felt as though, I've always felt as though whenever I'm looking at my own situation, for some weird reason, I always picture, oh, what would, you know, what would, what would uh, Henri do? 
you know i always think about myself in the gym and i always think when i when i'm pushing myself think of quotes that ronaldo has said i'm talking about both ronaldos i'm talking about people that have gone through things that we ourselves may not have gone through but we can resonate with because we know we've gone through our own difficult things and it's like oh shit you know Ronaldo growing up in Madeira in Madeira with nothing and he's sweeping the streets and he's cleaning with his mom and he's, his mom's doing all these things and his dad is when you look at the picture of his life and you think about yourself and then you start thinking hmm Okay, I can do more with myself when you look at icons like that. And I, I yeah, I, I've always respect, respected athletes for that reason. Mm. Because every single day they've got to get, get up and go, yes, they get paid really well for doing that. But every single day, Monday to Friday, Monday to Sunday, they've got to... <laughs> I, I know now that we're almost hitting 30. It's a chore to go to the gym. It's not something that I enjoyed as much as I did when I was 20. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 20, I was like, yeah, do you know what? I, I, I want to I wanna do this. Mm. Now it's kind of like, ah, damn. You're I've feeling those aches. Got to do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah. Oh. This whiskey that we're enjoying right now, the mm. cognac that we're enjoying I'm like, I, I've got to work it off tomorrow. I didn't think about that when I was 20. No. <laughs> you be thinking about, we're getting on it again. Right? Because I, it, because I can, mm, right? Mm. And, and, and that's why I, I respect their resilience. Mm. This is not easy. No. It's not easy. It's a lot of discipline. It's a lot of discipline. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very grateful as you are for these examples and um, how we can uh, do our best to try and be just as good as they are, mm. um, you know, in 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 our in our small bubbles that we live in. You know, these 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 guys are are there are they're, they're in the public eye and they're in the world. They're on they're on the world stage, performing in front of all of us. With their hearts on front, hearts on their sleeves. The Mike Tyson, the Tyson Furies, the I'm very feel Alexander <laughs> Usyk. You know the, the, these guys. You caught that so well. <laughs> they're doing it all in front of us. Mm. We're all doing it behind closed doors, and to be able to have these examples and, like you said, channel their energies when we're feeling low, regardless of whether we don't have those memories in our minds where we can go back to them. Like, oh, I've been here before. Actually, why don't you channel someone else? If you haven't been here before, channel someone else. Channel the stories that you're hearing today. Those times where you get knocked down, where someone says that you can't do it or it's never possible. Think about the times where you've seen someone else do it. Mm. Wait, hang on. Just just on that note, because there might be some 50-year-olds and thinking, do you know what? I'm going to get in a ring with... <laughs> 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 we don't want that. We don't, we, don't wanna, we don't want loads of 50-year-olds that have been in the army or some... No, no, some, we don't. Uncle, sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please. We also, furthermore, we also need to... <laughs> We also need to respect our elders. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I don't know whether or not Jake is respecting Mike Tyson to a certain extent. Mm. Did you see that <laughs> clip? There was a clip where um, the reporter was like, um, he was essentially calling Mike Tyson a gimmick fight for Jake Paul. And, and then Jake, Jake Paul said... literally was like... <laughs> I think the reporter is just called Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. He's just literally like swerved the whole thing. And he's like, who's calling me a gimmick? He's like, I didn't call you a gimmick. I, it's not me. I actually thought in that moment, <laughs> right, like Jake actually respects Mike Tyson. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it, it's, you have to respect mm -hmm. his legacy. Yeah. Um, but he also knew, he's, he's a smart man because he knew how Mike Tyson would react in that moment. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know? of course, of course, of course. 
Um, <laughs> it's coarse, and 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 nobody wants Mike Tyson's nuclear bomb to to come at your doorstep. No, um, but I I think all in all, there has been so many wins, so many losses within this year and. Most years, obviously, yes, we have amazing competitions. We have so many competitive things going on mm. most years. But this year particularly, I think there's been more controversy around some of the things because either it's been neck and neck or it's been the it's two weight classes or two like rookie underdog situations mm. that shouldn't be even in the ring with such a champion or David such and Goliath a Goliath sort of situation. Exactly, like a David and Goliath situation where you're like, whoa, this is never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we've had those moments. Um, and wow, what a year it's been so far. Yeah, and long but, um, may it continue. Hopefully I, the rest of the year is going to be ex as exciting. Right? Exactly. And I, I think the takeaway from this episode that we've done today is uh, the impossible is always possible. Like it's always possible. We would never ever have thought that the heavyweight, which is a dominant dominant weight within boxing, would ever be toppled by a cruiserweight. A cruiserweight, which is a lower weight. We always thought that that one punch that Tyson Fury would, well, not necessarily Tyson Fury, that one punch that a heavyweight would give to any other weight below them, it's KO, it's done. So, before the Davids out there, you use your slingshot. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. Use your slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where the slingshot came from. Because David. Oh, was it a slingshot? Yeah, he did. Oh, he shit. took him out. He took him out. I need to study the Bible. Oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> it was either slingshot or he was whipping. He was whipping something around. I, I knew he stoned, stoned him. He stoned him. I did, I did, he stoned I did him in some way. However you want to dress it, he stoned him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stoned him, and Goliath fell. Mm. But I. Mm. Yeah, but on that note, people, mm. thank you so much thank for joining us much. today. Um, Apologies if you're not into football or boxing, <laughs> but please take note of what we were talking about earlier on. Um, because if you've made it this far, the wins and losses in your life is very, very prevalent. And there's a lot to take from being resilient in the small moments and even the larger moments as well. I know I certainly have. And I've also appreciated a lot of the moments that I've taken away from the greats outside of my life as well. Thank you for joining us. Please comment below. Please like, subscribe, and join us next time. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, what's the tiramisu? I thought it was just like the, the wars, you know, the yeah, sausage, that, the sausage thing. What? You know, the, the South African sausage yeah. thing that you put in a grill, wars. I was confusing it. But you're saying it right now yeah, is I awesome, knew. bro. Yeah. <laughs>